Alrighty, I'm going to go through a uh, PowerPoint presentation that was made by a guy named Kevin Morris, real nice guy in uh, Indianapolis. Oh, well, I met him in Indianapolis. He's from uh, Westfield High School in Westfield, um, Indiana. And he was doing a uh, uh, presentation about photoelectron spectroscopy for his students and also another teacher's students. And he made up this PowerPoint to help, and I thought it was really useful. So first off, uh, PES. Okay, we're using that to understand atomic structure, electron configurations, ionization energy, and periodic trends. We'll see a little bit of each of those. Uh, but mostly, you know, we learned to do electron configurations, you know, uh, in my class, uh, just using the Aufbau Hotel, you know, a mnemonic to help you get the right answer. But where's the data that backs that up? So that's what photoelectron spectroscopy is all about. So he discusses here what is PES. So um, we know just that we're going to... Uh, in have a, a high energy source of light, and that's going to be x-rays, that hit the electrons, and it causes electrons to fly out of the atom. Now, it takes a certain amount of energy to get the electron to leave the atom, and that's based on how many protons are holding it into the nucleus, and how close those electrons are to the nucleus. But whatever um, leftover energy there is can be detected as the kinetic energy of the electron when they leave. So if you were to take how much energy you put into um, uh, an atom, you know, into, yeah, to fly into an atom, and that would be in terms of the uh, x-rays, then what, uh, some of the energy is going to be needed to get the electron to leave, but whatever leftover energy is, you know, then that is the kinetic energy. So if you know how much energy uh, it came out with, the electron came out with, and how much energy you put in, then you can figure out what was the binding energy uh, for that electron. Now we see it as a graph, and the, the y-axis here is going to be listed as signal intensity, which we can say that kind of that's the number of electrons. Uh, it's really the relative number of electrons. So, you know, um, if you see like five lines, it doesn't necessarily mean five electrons. It's just a relative scale. And on the uh, x-axis, then that's the binding energy. You also see it as delta UE. Uh, it could be the uh, ionization energy. And this will, on the AP test is going to be in megajoules per mole, um, but you'll also see data that's in electron volts. Uh, this is kind of interesting in that the uh, scale is going to be done backwards on the AP exam. So over here, this is the uh, highest energy and the lowest energy. So if you were to think of the nucleus, so here's the nucleus of the atom, then the electrons, you know, that are closest to the nucleus will have the greatest binding energy, and these will be farther and farther out. Um, a lot of times, in order to get the huge range of numbers, then it might be done as a logarithmic scale, or it could be uh, have little breaks here and there, and we'll see some examples. When you read this, okay, the, the height here tells you more or less the relative number of electrons at a specific energy level. And again, the ones over here take lots of energy to remove because they're close to the nucleus. And we over here, these are a lot easier to remove. Sample graphs you're going to see. There might be a graph where it just shows you all of the electrons in one single atom. And what we're going to learn is the idea that you should think of these, you know, this is from the 1s orbital, 2s orbital. So it kind of matches the uh, electron configuration. So for this one, it's 1s, that's two things tall, 2s, that's two things tall, 2p, and that's six things tall. Okay, then over here, that'll be 3s, and that's two things tall. And the next one here should be the 3p, that's only one thing tall. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p1, that's what this element is. Okay, this is what a real one looks like. Okay, so luckily we're dealing with these totally idealized versions, so we're not going to probably have to see something like this. And this is a mixture of different substances, and that adds uh, things to it too. Okay, this one here, they might do something where they say, well, here's the 3s, for, uh, and here's the 3s from a sodium and from a potassium, and we're going to put them on the same graph so you can discuss them and ask answer questions about that. So, and then the other one here that um, this showing that they might have these little breaks because the energies between these peaks is very, very, very high, and so this might be the best way to do it for the... Uh, having a little break between the energy levels in different places on that graph.
Okay, so here's the part I thought was very, very interesting. So we're saying here's a one, here's a hydrogen, and we know it's the, got one electron into one s. What would a, a helium look like? It's going to have two protons in the nucleus. So if you say, okay, two protons, that means that this little guy here is going to move a little bit to the left, and it should be twice as tall, then you're exactly right. Okay, so that would be helium. Now, what about lithium? We're going to add one more electron in. Well, three protons is we're going to expect it to shift to the left, and everything's always shift to the left every time. Okay, but when we do, we find that it shifts to the left, but we get a new peak, because now we're talking about 1s2, 2s1. Now, beryllium, okay, would have four uh, electrons, so what do we expect to see? And I say, okay, we're going to shift to the left, and we're going to have two peaks, each of two. Okay, next one would be boron. Okay, boron, we kind of expect 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. So again, they're going to shift to the left, and we should see another little peak that's only one thing tall. We get the carbon. Okay, we can shift to the left a little bit because now we have six protons in the nucleus. And every time we put more protons in the nucleus, the binding energy of everybody increases. And so they all shift a little bit more to the left. So carbon, we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. So what do we expect for nitrogen? Okay, we don't get another peak of two. What we do is now that the p, that's the 2p peak, now has three electrons in it. And when we get to oxygen, we should have, you know, P4, and fluorine, not surprised, is P5. And neon, you can also expect that's going to be P6. So if I were doing it with my students, I'd get them predict each time, see what you think is going to happen. Okay, then we get back to fluorine. I mean, the next one would be um, uh, sodium. So sodium, okay, we have another, everybody shifts to the left because now we have 11 protons, and we get a new peak. Magnesium, okay, that same peak would be twice as high. And then we're going to jump over to aluminum, and aluminum would be more, okay, so a little shifted to the left, more protons in the nucleus, we have a new little peak, and these are, now we're in the P's, so the next ones here, we just expect that uh, P orbital get higher and higher and higher, here we have to argon. Okay, potassium, okay, again, shift to the left, and we get a new peak, calcium, okay, a little double peak. And then the last one we have here is for scandium, okay? And scandium is interesting because the next one goes into the D, back to the 3D. This this one right here is the 4S, the one at 0.59. So where would the D be? A little bit to the left. Now, everybody shifted to the left because we have 21 protons, but that D orbital, you know, because it's closer into the nucleus, actually is held a little bit tighter. So it doesn't fill first, but it's a little tighter in there. Okay, some other questions here. Okay, which element are we talking about? And you might say that that is helium because it's two things tall, but you can't tell because this is not uh, the number of electrons necessarily. This is, you know, relative. So there's nothing to be relative with. So this could, that peak could be a one hydrogen or it could be two for a helium. You know, just one peak though. It's either hydrogen or helium. And in fact, it actually is helium. If you look up the number, it's 2.35 and that's where it would fit. Okay, but it could be either one. It's hard to tell from this picture. For this guy, which element would you say? I would label my um, orbitals and figure out what my electron configuration is. So I would say that this is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. Okay, so this represents the 3p orbital, 3s orbital, 2p orbital, 2s orbital, and 1s orbital, if I count up my electrons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, then I say, okay, this must be phosphorus, number 15. Okay, this is what real spectra look like, and luckily we're probably not dealing with real spectra like this, because this is uh, interesting. Okay, so I'd like to say thank you to Kevin Morse. Okay, from Westfield High School for doing this presentation, and I'm trying to kind of recreate how he presented it to us. And one thing I'll have to do, and I'm going to go back and, and go through and just watch all those different orbitals uh, change. Okay, and it's, I just like to see that because you can really see how the, uh, um, the everybody shifts. So shift, shift, shift. Everybody's shifting to the left a little bit, and you can see the things build up, and it kind of helps you get a feeling for the pattern. Thank you, Kevin Morse.